Remember we were talking about the reason why we need the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm going to share one right now. And if this doesn't talk to you, you're not human. I had a family member who was going through a divorce, okay? And she was just, oh my goodness, she was devastated. She was so hurt. She was so angry. She was just so full of this, this, this painful rage. She was in such a quandary. She didn't know what to do. She was torn this way, that way, and the other, all at once. One morning, in the middle of the morning, she, I would say around 5.30, um, she had an experience. Well, hold that station right there. And we go over to scene two at my house. Now, I was a baby Christian, so physically, I was still on my party clock, and I was awake until 5.30. I had not gone to bed yet. And all of a sudden, I felt this evil. Oh, my goodness, this evil was so thick you could cut it with a knife. It was scary. I am so serious. I had never felt an evil quite this strong. I felt it in the past, but this time it was like, it was so scary, I could feel it coming at me. That's that's how I felt. And being a baby Christian, I really didn't know everything I should do. I did what I was taught in church. Thank God for a body of Christ that taught spiritual warfare. And how to use the name of Jesus. The gifts of discerning of spirits. Oh, thank God for the teachings at that church. I thank, I thank that church to this day. Pastor M, M. Tyrone Cushman was the pastor at that time. And boy, I mean, I mean, we got taught. You hear me? Now listen, I'm in my house, 5.30 in the morning, I feel this evil, and as God would have it, and I know he orchestrated this. I saw a demon, I saw a demon in my house, in real life. This was not a dream. I was fully awake. And I could see the facial expression. I knew exactly where he was in my house. And I knew he was in my house, almost in my living room. He was peeping at me in the living room from the hallway. And he had the evilest grin. Oh my goodness. He, it reminded me of the of the most evil expression of a Chessie cat grin. I mean, an evil version of the Chessie cat grin. Well, now I'm trying to figure out, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? This thing is right here with me. And I started rebuking the devil and casting him out and commanding him to leave in the name of Jesus and binding and shutting him down and canceling. I mean, I was saying everything, doing everything I possibly could to ward this thing off. I was really afraid he had come to do me harm. I was really, I was petrified. I had never experienced seeing a demon before. I was only saved maybe about a matter of months. It was not a year or two. This was really short. So as I'm rebuking the devil, I'm rebuking this demon, commanding him to leave my house in the name of Jesus. I started to get this burden. And I mean, I had been rebuking him for like maybe five minutes or seven minutes or so. And then I start getting this burden. On top of him, I get a burden. Now I could see his whole body posture, his head tilt and everything. Yet, at the same thing, my real brain said, there's nothing there. But I can see it as plain as I can see myself in the mirror. I started praying for each family member. And as I was praying for each family member, I got to this one. Try not to be too specific. But when I got to this one, it was like I was stuck in wet mud, thick, wet mud. I couldn't go anywhere. I had to keep praying for her. I had to keep praying for her and praying for her and praying for her. And I'm telling you, what was so weird about this was no matter how I tried to move on, to pray for, the, for this one, that one, or the other one, I would always be right back 
praying for this one. And I, I, was, I was saying things like, Lord, you know they're going through this divorce and you know they're hurting and they're angry and they didn't know their husband did this and blah, 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 blah. And you know how she feels. Lord, please, whatever you do, don't let her do anything harmful to herself. Please, God, protect her, protect her, protect her. Don't let her do anything stupid, Lord. Please, you know how she's feeling. I'm just going, I'm just begging and pleading. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wore myself out praying for that chick. I loved her so much, I'm telling you. She was so, so special in my heart. So, anyway, as I'm praying for her, I start to feel like the demonic presence is ebbing away, is easing down, is, is waning now. It's just, and I said, okay, okay, this is working. And I start feeling sleepy, and I feel like it's done, and the demon is gone. So I give in to my body, and I go to sleep. I go to bed. I had to go to church that morning. I get up around 7.30 because I'm startled awake by this dream. And in this dream, now I have a dream. In this dream, everything in my house looked real. I mean, the timing, everything was exact to real life. And the phone rings like at 2 or 3 in the morning in the dream. And I jump up and I run to the phone. And, um, and it's, it's her son. And he says... I, I need you to come over real quick. It's mama. She tried to commit suicide. Boy, the next thing I knew, I was at her vestibule. And I'm, I'm not on the ground. I'm looking from a higher vantage point, like from a ceiling view, hovering over the heads of the policemen that are bombarding the vestibule. So they go into the kitchen, and I'm floating behind them to see if she's okay. Is she alive? Is she dead? You know, what's going on? I feel such trepidation about even looking. And as soon as I got ready to look, boom, I woke up. Okay. When I woke up, I called, and I said, are you okay? Well, she was the one that answered, thank God. And she said, yeah, I'm fine. And I said, okay. I went back to sleep. I woke up later to get ready for church. Are you okay? I'm fine. I said, okay, bye. I get to church. Go up to the telephone booth. Remember those? Give her one more last call. Are you okay? Okay, who told you? I said, who told me what? And then we go through this back and forth. You're supposed to be a Christian. Why are you lying? You shouldn't lie. I'm like, okay, I'm not lying. Let me tell you what happened. And I told her about the demon, the dream, okay? The demon, the prayer, and the dream. When I got through, girlfriend was quiet on the other end. She was very quiet. And I thought she had just laid the phone down like, oh, this chick is tripping. I said, are you still there? Hello? Hello? And then after a while, I hear this, oh, 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 oh Patty, oh, Patty. And I said, what's wrong? No, but where'd that come from? And she starts to tell me, as she gains her composure, that at uh, close to 5.30 in the morning, she was bawling her eyes out. And she kept repeating over and over, I can't take this. I can't take this. It hurts too much. I can't take it. It's, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't handle this. I can't take another thing. I don't know. And all of a sudden, she hears a voice. And she's telling me that she heard the voice speak to her. And she just happened to notice it was 5.30 in the morning. Well, as she hears this thing talking to her, she agrees with it. She decides to agree with it. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm tired of this. I want out. So what does she do? 
she begins the planning her demise. As as she's planning, she said it felt as if somebody reached inside of her and just lifted out all of her love for her kids and her family members and life and herself and everything that ever mattered to her. Didn't own up to a hill of beans anymore. She didn't care. She was like an inanimate object with no human attachments whatsoever. So she goes along with it. Like, okay, this is cool. And she's planning out her demise. And as she's planning her demise, she can't find certain things. So now she's got to go to plan B. And she's planning that demise. And as she's planning and thinking and trying to figure out, all of a sudden, she says, it was like something, like a big football tackler, jumped, pounced on her. And all of her emotions that she didn't feel then, just, just, just rushed into her chest. And she, she started to feel all this emotional attachment and a love for her kids. And she saw a vision. And she saw the kids coming into the kitchen, finding her dead. When they found her dead, they started freaking out. When she saw them freaking out, the motherly instincts just rose to the surface and she said, I can't do that. I, I can't do that to them. I'll mess them up for life. She lived another 30 some odd years, you guys, because the Holy Spirit worked through a dummy who didn't even know what she was doing at the time. Oh, why? The dream was God's way of explaining and confirming to me that God was working. Even with the demon manifesting himself to me, that was ordered by God. Because how would I know there was anything to fight had I not felt it or seen it? Look at how God works. We need the Holy Spirit, y'all. Big time. Remember that. Ask him to fill you. Amen.